welcome to session number three. All right. Um, uh, last night oh, um, and th this morning, I asked you guys to look at tutorial number two. Danelia, we're Anthony. listening. Hi there. How are you? Hello. Are you good? Okay. I failed to download the tutorial. I'm still trying to open it. Okay, you don't download it. You just click the link and then you look at it on your phone. And There's it's no not opening. It's not opening in my phone. It's designed for phones. So it's uh, you must persevere, try again. Uh, if you're struggling, then you just take a okay. screenshot and then you put it in the WhatsApp and we help you. All right. So you have to do the tutorials. If you don't do the tutorials, then you might as well not be here because all the learning is in those four tutorials. You really, really do need to engage them. And if you can't get them, you need to tell us so we can give you an alternative link if necessary. All right. So did you all hear okay. that, people? Everyone, if you're having any difficulties, you need to alert us in the WhatsApp and we will try and find a way to get you in. All right. Uh, what about Sydney? Sydney, what was your experience with... with um... Hello, Andrew. Hey, good to tutorial hear you. Number two, tutorial number two was quite interesting, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm ready to prepare an OER All right. resource. Okay. Yeah. All right. So remember, when you are um, uh, preparing your OER, you can use an existing OER and fix it so that it talks to Zimbabwe. So say, for example, you found a resource which was about types of trees, all right, maybe for biology or for nature or something. Then you say, ah, oh, but half the trees we don't get in Zimbabwe. Well, then you can take them out and you can put new trees in and you can put new pictures, etc. So you can adapt an existing resource by making it more suitable for teachers and learners in Zimbabwe. So keep that in mind. So you can create from scratch or you can adapt an existing OER to better suit Zimbabwe. So Sydney, I'm, I'm encouraged. That sounds good. Let's have one more person. Ellen, what was your experience? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I can't hear you. I'm very sorry. No, we can hear you, not that clearly. This is a bit stretched, but we can hear you. All right. Can you type in the chat, what was your experience with uh, tutorial number two? So I'm going to just um, give a very quick overview. I'm not lecturing on it. Uh, all the details are in the tutorial. I'm going to just give you a very, very quick overview. All right. Right. First of all, what are you going to, uh, um, am I sharing? Yes. Um, first of all, what are you searching for? All right. So it's no good searching for maths or for um, uh, science or anything like that. That's just way too broad. Okay. You're going to find stuff, but hey, who knows if it's what you're actually going to teach. You need to drill down. You've got to go deeper and deeper and deeper. All right. So I would say the obvious place to find the right type of search terms is in your curriculum documents. So find your syllabi and then uh, work your way through the syllabus till you find the actual, the actual um, specific objectives that the ministry has provided. So if I am looking at, uh, uh, I think it's grade two, is it? Uh, maths and science, and I'm doing topic number five, energy and power, then you'll find a grid like this one in that document. So for example, uh, what are the objectives learners should be able to do? But very importantly, what is content? And then you can look in there for particular key words. So rather than even searching for energy and power, which is a bit also quite broad, you should rather look for things like renewables, biogas, um, non-renewables, coal and petroleum, etc. All right. So you're looking for very specific terms because then your OER search will be much more effective. All right. So keep that in mind then. Don't search for very high broad terms. Try and get down as deep and as, as specific as you can go. All right. So that's what it was trying to tell you there. 
And then we said, okay, so now let's do it. So how do you search for it? All right, so I'm going to demonstrate it rather than go, go through the tutorial. So um, you can, oh, one of the ways you can do it is you can um, look for something. So say, for example, I'm a history teacher. Uh, Nelson Mandela. There we go. Um, so let's say I'm a history teacher. I need materials on some of the people that we're covering in the curriculum. Now, obviously, I'm from South Africa, and uh, Nelson Mandela is very definitely in the history curriculum. All right. So, um, but you need to find terms that are appropriate to your context. All right. So make sure that you use your local uh, machines, uh, documents. And, and now I'm saying, okay, but it's giving me lots of stuff, but how do I know if they're open or not? All right, so the best way is to go to your, I think it's settings actually, go to settings and say advanced search. All right, so here we go. It's the same, you might've seen this before, but the one that's really interesting is this last one here. Let me try and make this a bit bigger. Um, it's this last one here, usage rights. All right, so I would say, uh, which of these would I like? Free to use or share, free to use, share, even commercially, free to share or modify, free to use, share, modify, even commercially. All right, so if I want to have um, the most options, I would go for this one. If I'm not too worried, um, then I can go for this first one here. So they don't use Creative Commons wording. They come up with their own ones, but you should be able to see the licenses in here now. All right, so let's say, for example, I go for that one. And I say, go and search. All right. So now apparently all of these goodies here uh, are creative commons. Um, let me just get in a little bit closer so you can see. All right. So uh, this first one here uh, is. In... So this one over oh, here, this is like a book, press books, words of wisdom, introductory to philosophy from Nelson Mandela, is that any good? So yeah, sure enough, it's a book. Um, it's got a little bit of a history, some uh, thing. Oh, here's the license here. CC by NCSA. Cool, all right. Is there more than that or is that just it? Is it just the, oh no, there's, uh, but it's more philosophy uh, rather than, uh, there's a Dalai Lama and Gandhi, et cetera, but there is a page on Nelson Mandela. All right, so that might not be enough. So let's go back and have a look what else we got. All right, some quotes here. Nelson Mandela quotes. Um, it's on wiki quote, a little bit of a biography, and then some of his famous quotes. All right, yeah, okay. What's the license? So if we scroll right down to the bottom, you'll see down the bottom here. All right, uh, Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike License. Cool. All right. So that means we could use it in our projects and so on. All right. So uh, one of the things we would encourage you to do then is if you are in Google is to use the, all right, if you go back. You go to, no, go back. You do a search. You do a search and then you go to more, oh, hang on. Set, sorry, settings, advanced search. Settings, advanced search. And then you would, in your usage rights, you would choose what it is you're looking for. All right. And here we go. This one, Zebra, and down the bottom, Creative Commons license. All right. So that's how you can find um, uh, things in Google advanced search. But what happens if you're looking for pictures? So then you can go directly to images.google.com. All right, here it is. You can see it says images there. I'll make it a bit bigger so you can see. A bit too big. All right. And then you can say what you're searching for. So let's say I'm looking for Robert Mugabe. Again, another history lesson. All right. So what we can do now is we're looking at images. Now there's a lot of images here, but they might actually be um, copyrighted. And we've got to keep away from that because we're trying to put together a little history of things that have happened. So again, you would go to 
this time you go to tools and your usage rights is right here. So you can say usage rights, creative commons licenses. And now you can see these pictures, apparently you could use in your PowerPoints, you could use in uh, student projects or whatever. There's no problems with copyright apparently. So if we go and look at something like this one, you can see that it's on Flickr. So let's go through and have a look. Here's the Flickr site. And you'll notice there's the license. So this one is CC by ND, no derivatives. Remember from our test yesterday, ND, no derivatives, which means you can stick it in your PowerPoint, you can put it in your projects, but you may not fiddle with it. You've got to leave it as, as it is. So you shouldn't ideally even crop it or put a border on it or anything like that. You've just got to use it as it is. All right, let's look for something else while we're here. Let's just go for Victoria Falls. And again, we want to go to, um, uh, oh, we'll go to images. Here's the images. We can say uh, tools, usage rights, show us only Creative Commons licenses. All right, there we go. Whole load of them there. Yeah, I like this one. So we can go, go and have a look. Oh, again, this one's also on Flickr. Go through, and there it is. This one is CC by SA. All right. So that's how you can uh, do, do it using uh, Google Advanced Search and Google Image Search. The other thing that was also in that, um, in that tutorial, which was very handy, is using the Creative Commons. Creative Commons search. All right, so um, they've uh, recently done this page up. I think it's worse than it used to be because uh, now it only finds pictures, but Google does that better than Creative Commons. But down here is a little button, the old CC search. Okay, this is cool, this one. I don't know why they thought the other one's better. But um, so here I can say I'm looking for uh, 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 let's do some music. So let's go for, just go Africa. All right. Um, so the nice thing about Creative Commons, the old search, is that you can find other types of media. All right. So you can find music. So if you want to have music in your PowerPoint or you want to have music in your website or on your blog or whatever, then you can come in here. So I like SoundCloud. So let's have a look. Is there any music? Uh, which is Creative Commons. You can see down here, to modify commercially. There's a few here. This isn't to this one. And it's too subtle. I want something a bit more obvious. Hey, it sounds too much like that. Was it Toto? I'm trying to think. I'm so old. That was a band in my day. Let's try this one. It's more West African rather than, say, Southern African. But anyway, say, for example, that's the one that you're interested in. So you can go through to here. You can uh, have a look for the little um, license. There it is. Creative Commons license. So you can download this and then insert it into your PowerPoint. And then there's uh, the only things you have to do is what is the license actually? It is attribution. So you just have to say who, who, who provided it. All right. So that's what's really nice about the Creative Commons. Uh, uh, yes, Creative Commons search is that you can find other types of multimedia. Sometimes you already know what it is you're looking for. All right. So for example, um, I'm working in YouTube. I spend a lot of time in YouTube. Um, hello. Oh, my hello. Name is Daniel okay. That's one of my, one of my students. Um, but um, now you want to look for materials that you can put in your PowerPoint into students can put it into their um, projects that you can build a little website on, et cetera, et cetera. So um, how do you find only the Creative Commons stuff in YouTube? So say, for example, I'm searching for um, 
Zimbabwe education. Oh, there's Zimbabwe music. Let's try that one. All right. So let's say now I'm going, oh, okay, I need some Zimbabwe music. Not that funny stuff from Nigeria, right? So how do we now look through all of this stuff and choose only things that are that the copyright allows us to use? So you go to your filters button here, and then you'll notice in the fourth column on the right-hand side, it says Creative Commons. If you click on there, apparently these videos you can make copies of. All right, so you could use them. Uh, uh, let's have a look at this one. Get through the advert. How boring. Oh, God, God. Oh, that's impressive. Okay. Let's say we wanted to use this one. All right. How would we know that it is Creative Commons? And the way you do it is you go to the Show More button here, Show More, and you'll see it says the license is Creative Commons Attribution. Mm -hmm. All right. So okay. this is one that you could actually use as part of your project, uh, uh, whatever. Okay. So um, the, the way we normally we would um, right click, uh, click it and take a, a copy of the URL. Um, if you want to actually take a download of the video, uh, you're allowed to because it's Creative Commons. Then you have to use a different type, a, um, a different little piece of software to actually take the video, download the video. Shall I show you how to do that? Let's do it very quick. So we go download YouTube video. And the one I like is called. <laughs> On page one, but it seems to have been pushed back now. Well, and there's lots. You can see there's lots and lots of these laps. Then you just put the URL into. Let's see if I can do one. Who's making? Let's mute a few people who are making noises. Okay, cool. All right, so let me just do one. Although I've never used these before. My one, I can't see. Hey, my one's gone. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, this is it here. Why two makes is the one I like. All right. So if I go here, all I have to do is come back here, copy the URL, click in here and paste. All right. And then you say start. And then you, you can say which, how much you want, what's your, your uh, resolution that you're looking for. All right. So it's as easy as that. I won't do it now because I don't really need that. Okay. And the, the tutorial also looked at um, – it also looked at OER Commons. All right. So we said here are some open repositories which – they're not really search engines. They're basically databases of open educational resources. So it's a good idea to keep an eye on some of them. The most obvious one that um, primary and secondary school teachers should be searching for is OER Commons. All right, so let me just go there. Okay, here it is. So there isn't a one-stop shop for OERs, but OER Commons does provide you with um, quite a good index. The sad thing is it's American. So it tries to link everything to American curriculum standards, which means absolutely nothing to us. All right. Um, but say, for example, I'm trying to do um, algebraic expressions. So I'm a maths teacher. All right. I can type in here and I can go and do a search or I can drill down a little bit deeper and I can say I'm interested in mathematics, which level I can say I'm interested in high school um, and which standard. Now, the standards mean nothing to us. All right. Pennsylvania, North Dakota. Who, what do we care? We don't. All right. So leave that one blank and then do a search. 
<clears throat> All right, so it's found 242 OERs because obviously everything in OER Commons is um, open to some extent. And we can see here, interpreting algebraic expressions, algebraic expressions and equations, algebra, seeing structure in expressions. And you can see the little licenses on the left-hand side. So this first one is by NCND. This one here is by NCSA. All right, so as long as you know your little license, you know what you're looking for, you can say, all right, I'll go for one of those. So this one here is a lesson plan. It's um, operations with radical expressions. Okay, so we can come in here, it tells us a little bit more about it. It tells us it's aimed at high school, grades nine to 12. It is a lesson plan. It's been put together by Bonnie Waltz, Tracy Rains, and Deanna Mayers in 2017. So that looks encouraging. So then you say view the resource. All right. Okay, and they've actually built it, this one, they've built it in OER Comet. So it's not a form or a folder or a website. It's actually built in OER Comet. So um, it gives you some examples, um, what they should be exploring. Well, the pictures are broken, that's sad. Um, uh, uh, the marking criteria, etc. All right, so maybe that's not so wonderful. Let's try one of the others. I wonder why the pictures are broken. That's sad. All right, so let's try um, polynomials and rational expressions. Okay, view the resource. This one has taken us out of OEL Commons to the website where it's being kept. And we wait. There it comes. Okay. Algebra, arithmetic with polynomials and rational expressions. Okay. And it's broken into sections. Multiply binomial, binomials by polynomials. You can see I'm not a maths person. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, uh, well, I add and subtract polynomials with two variables. All right, so say you went for that one. Let's go in and see what the actual materials look like. Okay, and it's a little interactive thing. You can click on there and you can answer. Then there's a stuck, there's a video that you can look at, uh, which kind of explains how to do it. Give it a moment. There it comes. Uh, oh, but it fourth from two x to the fourth minus eight x squared y squared minus y to the fourth. And I encourage you to pause this video and give it a try. All right. So you can see there's like a little explanation about how you're supposed to do it. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see what the what the I'm trying to remember, I should know Khan Academy. They've, they offer a lot of materials, but I've forgotten what the actual license is. Uh, user our terms, our team impact, help share, your story, grace, blah, 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 blah. Our mission is to provide free world class education, it's a non profit, donate. All right, okay, I've lost it. But what did it say in here? It said it was by NCSA. All right, so it's Khan Academy, Creative Commons, Attribution, Non-Commercial Share Alike. All right, so again, um, there are different search engines, but sometimes you should just also always have a check on OER Commons if you are a primary or secondary um, education teacher. Um, for higher education, there is higher education materials inside OER Commons, so uh, it's also worth having a look, but it's not famous for um, a, a lots and lots of that type of content. Um, it's, it's got a reputation for being good at high school and primary school levels. All right, so keep that in mind. Okay, 
Uh, right, what else did we cover yesterday? No, that was it. Yep, that was it. All right, so um, I'm hoping then that you were able to go through in your own time. You can see I rushed through. It still took me 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, uh, but you will need to give yourself an hour to go through very carefully and make sure that you can actually do it. All right. Um, and hopefully now the tutorial one about the Creative Commons licenses kind of makes sense because when you're looking for your OERs, you've also got to be able to decipher what is the, the license that each one has. Okay. Are there any queries or questions on tutorial number two? All right, I went very fast. You can see I do this all the time. All right, so um, uh, it might take a bit longer to kind of get the skills. Um, so don't get too worried about how fast, but you do have the tutorial that you can go and check in your own time. All right, I'm going to shoot back and introduce the next one. So tonight, um, and remember, you guys wanted a test. So tomorrow in our two o'clock session, there's another cahoots test. You said you wanted another practice. So there will be a little test tomorrow. I will be testing you on information from one, tutorials, one, two, and three. All right, so you need to have a look at three tonight so that you're ready for tomorrow's test. All right, and this is about creating your own OERs. All right, so um, the beauty of OERs is that there, there are actually five things you can do with an OER. Retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. So I want you to have a look through those and think, oh, okay. But if you're going to make adaptations, like earlier I was saying, you might find a resource which is about botany, but many of the plants in the resource just aren't available in Zimbabwe. They don't grow in that latitude. All right. So then um, you want to swap things out. That's the beauty. So these two here, revise and remix allow us to adapt the OER. Not all OERs can be adapted, but the vast majority can. So I want you to go through the tutorial and make sure that you are up to date, that you understand what these five R's are and which are the ones that allow adaptation. All right. And there's a little bit of uh, advice about how to revise. Um, there's some considerations. All right some things to think about um, when should you create from scratch or should you just revise one that already exists and then remix i mentioned remix what the hell is this remix business all right this is something i do all the time i love remixing all right but what is it so come and have a look work it out uh, read up on it um, and uh, make sure that you are up to speed with revise and remix and then what about creating your own? What happens if you say, oh, I can't be bothered with all this adaptation business. I want to create my own one. Cool. That's good. All right. But there are a few things you need to be a little bit careful of when you are creating an OER from scratch. All right. So I want you to come through here, have a look at these considerations. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, which is something you must think about for all of your resources whether they're open or not but then there are three special items that you need to be aware of if you're creating OERs all right so come have a look at that and the last thing you're going to have to do um, in this tutorial is actually put your license plate on your resource okay so you've seen all these little license plates uh, I'll give you an example like this one here this one here all right. So how do you get oh, it's a bit small. how do you get this uh, Creative Commons license plate on your resource, on your PowerPoint, on your MS Word document, on your video, on whatever you are deciding you're going to either adapt or create? All right. So uh, in the section on license your own resource, then we take you through the steps. OK. There's a little video that explains how to do it. Blah, blah, blah. In this video, we now want to put a Creative Commons license on our newly created open educational resource. Okay, so that's the final piece that you need 
uh, for number three. So we want you to be aware of how to adapt, what to consider when you are creating a new one, and what, um, how to get the license on the resource. Okay, so I'm going to quickly just show you um, what was done in the workshops in 2019. I'll just show you um, uh, an example, which is sitting here. Give me a second while I call it up. It's sitting in here. Give me a second. Harari. Uh, where did you go? Uh, I showed you Grace. I want to show you one of the others. Where did they go? Ah. Is it on the desktop? It is. All right. So here's one um, which was made uh, with the cell phone. All right. So we said by definition, isomerism is a phenomenon where molecules have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. Yes. All right. So um, as Eric, I think his name was, uh, Elias, sorry. Elias decided that he would like to demonstrate using the, the board and also the model. So you see he's got the model as well. So he gave like a, a little lecture, but with some visual components to it. All right. So his is more or less like that, where he explains bonding. All right. Um, this one was interesting. Did you? Uh, Albert um, wanted to take um, geometry, for example, the locus of a point that moves so that it is a fixed distance from a fixed point. So he's trying to explain various terms, but rather than do it boringly in words, he got these uh, colleagues of his to demonstrate. You can see he's, he's moving around the, uh, well, that one, he's moving around a fixed point, whereas this one, the point which moves so that it is equidistant from two fixed points. And then later on, he used a mirror to show the locus of a point which moves so that it is always a fixed distance from a fixed line. So these can be uh, quite confusing or confounding to students. So he wanted to use mo human models to show what he was talking about. All right, which I thought worked quite well. You can see he's looking in the mirror and then he has to move. Yeah, so I thought that was quite good. Uh, um, but it's up to you. And as I say, it doesn't have to be a video. All right, it can be, it can be um, a PowerPoint, it can be Excel spreadsheet, it can be MS Word, but it obviously has to be digital. All right, so you've got to come up with a digital teaching and learning resource, which is linked to the curriculum somehow you've got to show me how it links all right which specific objective are you organizing this resource for um it has to be digital and let's let's face it it's got to be quality because it's going to reflect on you and your school your name is going to go on it because attribution always goes on all right so um it's got to have it's got to be quality and then we also want it to be um, licensed. So we want you to put the little license plate on. So did, um, uh, with Albert, he just wrote Creative Commons attribution at the end of his one. What did Elias do? A5. He, oh, there we are. Creative Commons attribution. Okay, he just wrote it on. And then you're seeing Grace's one. Oh, there was also a first aid one. This is one of With day class, I have put a first aid kit or a first aid box with me. All right. So Muchingeti was explaining what should be in the first aid box. All right. And it was going through all the various goodies that should be in a well stocked first aid box. And there's her, um, her Creative Commons CC BY. 
All right. Now they've uh, all three of them just typed it in, and that's fine. You can do that. But what I really want is to see those little license plates, which the tutorial will tell you how to put it in. Okay. All right. All right, blah, blah, blah from me. I think it's enough blah, blah, blah. I think it's time for you to go do some work. All right. Uh, are there any questions or queries about uh, number two and number three? Tutorials two and three. Is that, does that mean you guys are all in control? All right. I'm hoping so. Remember, uh, uh, when I was talking to you, oh, I've forgotten who, who it was this morning. Um, no, not this morning. This, uh, when we first started. Uh, was it Ellen? I can't remember. Um, uh, they, they were having problems. All right. And so you can't just sit there and say, oh, I'm having problems. All right. You've got to be proactive. So you've got to get onto the WhatsApp. And you've got to say, hey, I'm having problems. And either your colleagues will help you or love more or myself or someone, um, uh, one of the facilitators will come and uh, see what, what, what they can do. All right. But don't be passive. Don't just sit there going, oh, OK, can't get in. That doesn't work. All right. When you're doing remote learning, you need to have initiative. You've got to um, realize that you are responsible for your learning. We can only take it so far. And then you have to step in. All right. You get very upset when your learners um, show disinterest or uh, no initiative. So it's the same for us. We would like to see you guys trying and um, uh, supporting each other. And then obviously we will support you as much as we can as well. All right. These are trying times. You need to get stuck in and uh, do the best you can. All right. Cool. Any, I don't see any hands up. Can I sign off? Are we done for today? Any queries? Any questions? Oh, well, there's a little chat. Let me have a quick look at the chat. I see there's a few items in there. Okay, uh, Shanghai said number two went well. Sydney said he also enjoyed the at Google advanced search. Uh, Divani said enjoyed using the advanced search. Christina said the tutorial was very interesting with well stated objectives. I hope to create my own unique OER soon. Oh, your time has come. Justin says wonderful tutorial for day two. We are fast becoming fully tech empowered. Lekker, lekker. Rebecca, educative. I managed to search using Creative Commons. Cool. All right. So we're getting some nice feedback. Oh, and we got Temba. Quite enjoyable and user friendly. All right. So I'm quite happy that you that you quite enjoyed it. <laughs> All right, uh, good. So number three is on us. So can you use this afternoon while you're still at school, use their bandwidth and get stuck in, or if you have to use your data, which UNESCO supplied, but you do need to catch up if you haven't already done two, but everyone needs to do three. Okay, cool. Joyce, the tutorial took me back to KFIT workshop at the GZ hotel. GZ is Great Zimbabwe. That was amazing. Oh, that was such a treat. And they took they put us in a really nice hotel in the right at Great Zimbabwe. Fantastic. Rather than sitting in the roof. Okay, well, this time they put me in the roof. But anyway, uh, Joyce, yes, that was good fun, wasn't it? That was a great workshop. Okay, it's well power. It's 47 now. We've been going for 47 minutes. So I think that's enough yada 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 from me. Um I will see you tomorrow at two o'clock. Be ready for your test.